In the land of dwarfs, the criteria of comparison has always traveled in the orbit of zero. Why should I stop? I obey the four elements, and the job of drawing up the constitution of my heart is not the business of the local government of the blind. In the ancient pre-Islamic world, the women inhabiting the lands of the various Iranian empires had comparative freedoms rivaled only by the women of ancient Egypt. Freedoms and choice far exceeding that of ancient Greek women. They were not only highly respected, but in many cases considered equals. And throughout Iran's long pre-Islamic history, there are multiple examples of dynamic women in the military, commerce, politics, and real estate. Women could own land, conduct the affairs of business, receive equal pay, travel freely throughout the realm. Royal women could even hold their own council meetings on policies impacting their socioeconomic environments. These roles equally fascinated and repulsed the ancient Greeks and Romans. Let us travel back to the time of the ancient Elamite and Median cultures. Many of the practices here would become part of the cultural fabric of the Iranian identity as it evolved through successive empires. It is here in the early first millennium BCE that we see the first examples of royal women being given titles of respect. Generally, the higher the rank of the woman in society, the more rights were provided, at least initially. For over the centuries, more liberties would be provided. The structure roughly as follows. At the highest echelon was the mother of the king. Then the principal wife or mother of the king's heir. Beneath that, the king's daughters, then the sisters, then the lesser wives and concubines, then a tier of noble women. These would be wives and relatives of satraps, for example, or military men. Then military women, business women, laborers, and finally servants. During the first Persian Empire, in Cyrus's army, there are many examples of females serving in battle. Pantea Arteshbod was one of these. She was a lieutenant commander in the Persian army and wife of a general. There's varying accounts depending on the source. Some say she was instrumental in the formation of the 10,000 strong Persian immortals, while other sources say it was Cyrus. However, sources are in sync with regards to what she provided, positive and inspiring leadership on the battlefield. We also have an account of another female lieutenant commander by the name of Artunus, who may have served under Cyrus or the reign of Darius I. Evidence to further support Iranian women serving in the military during this time comes to us from the tombs of Achaemenid women themselves. One such tomb having a javelin, spear, knife, bow, and arrows belonging to a woman. Items arrayed not just as gifts, but as belongings. While the world had lost countless written records of the First Empire when Persepolis was burnt by Alexander and his troops. The irony was that the same fires that burned the scrolls preserved the clay tablets by essentially baking them. These tablets have told us much of what we do know about commerce and rule in the Empire. For example, there are tablets that show the records of a Persian businesswoman named Irdabama. She was extremely wealthy and dealt primarily in wine and grain, as well as overseeing various different business holdings, including centers of production and real estate holdings, not just in the heart of the empire, but as far away as present-day Syria and Egypt. These records show that her workforce numbered almost 500 laborers, and that she personally signed off and oversaw sales, production, and distribution of the goods to the far reaches of the empire. She had a personal seal for all legal documents to make them binding to her name alone. And she counted both female and male subordinates among her ranks. While much of the movie 300 is laughably fictional, there is some truth in the character of Artemisia of Caria. While she was not an Iranian, coming instead from Greek lineage, it was within the Persian Empire that she was afforded the ability to enter the military. 
her father, the satrap of Halicarnassus. And when he died, this was passed on to her husband, but upon his death, to her. Her name, coming from its namesake Artemis, meaning great or excellent, a reputation she would certainly earn with wisdom and ferocity on the battlefield. Most know of her exploits from the Battle of Opus or the Battle of Salamis, where she urged Mardonius, the leading Persian commander, to not engage with the Greeks in a naval battle. And while he respected her, other voices would ultimately win out, with hers being the single lone dissenting voice, a voice ignored that would ultimately lead to their defeat. Another woman of whom we know less of is the other female lieutenant commander in the Persian army, Artunus. We know she was the daughter of a Persian general, Artabaz, and both served either under Cyrus or Darius I. Utab Aryobarzan was the sister of the Persian hero, Aryobarzanus, and was said to have fallen with him either defending the Persian gates against Alexander and his army, or in a last stand at Persepolis. Musa. We've covered Musa quite a bit, especially in my Parthian video series, but she was a Parthian queen who co-ruled along with her son, Phraates V. She used her political savvy and sly ferocity and wielded whatever weapon she needed to climb station, even poisoning her husband to initially take the throne. You can find out more about her in my Parthian video series, which I'll link in the description below. Another Parthian noblewoman was Sura. We know little of her early military history or whether she formally served. She'd advised her father throughout his reign. And when his rule was toppled by Ardashir I, bringing an end to the Parthians and ushering in the Sassanids, she would go on to wage a guerrilla war and die in battle against them. Azadokht Shabanu, who lived 240 to 270 CE during the reign of Shapur I, as his principal wife, was thought to have been mostly responsible for introducing Greek physicians into the court and for ushering in the founding of Gunda Shapur. Gunda Shapur, almost unique in the ancient world as being not only a hospital treating the ill and dying, but a library and an academy of higher learning. She was the equivalent of a Renaissance woman in her time, a skillful swordswoman, businesswoman, diplomat, and civil planner. Next, we have Apronik, and it's fitting that the last great Iranian woman of ancient Iran that we cover is Apronik. Apronik commanded the Sasanian army against the invading Arab Muslims during the reign of Yazdegerd III. She was the daughter of a renowned Sasanian general, and after her schooling, she followed into the footsteps, entering the military. Hers, not an appointment through nepotism, but one earned through the ranks. She entered as the modern equivalent of a petty officer. The great Sasanian Empire had been weakened by centuries of war with the Byzantine Empire, and it was now threatened directly by a new foe, the Rashidun Caliphate. The Rashiduns launched a full-scale invasion against the remnants of the Sasanian Empire, and Apronik would take command of a battalion of what was left of the forces of the Sassanid Empire in an attempt to resist. She would observe that the caliphate itself often used non-conventional guerrilla tactics, where they would strike and then melt back into the desert quickly. She would lead her battalion in similar hit-and-run strikes. While she and other resistance forces would never restore the empire, she would become a symbol of freedom and resistance. Outnumbered, she would eventually be defeated, but like Musa, for the Parthians hundreds of years earlier her legacy would live on. There were amazing Iranian women after the fall of the Sasanians, like Banu, for example, who in the 800s CE, along with her husband, also led a resistance, but would fall to betrayal. But these women would push from outside the boundaries of the new society of even greater inequality that they found themselves in, rather than from within, as they had under the three previous empires.